Welcome back. We are here for another lesson of the Jesus, the Great I Am series. We have been looking at the seven I Am statements of Jesus that are recorded in the Gospel of John. Last week, we looked at where Jesus says he is the gate to the sheepfold. And we learned that Jesus is the only way to salvation. So today we're going to look at and explore what Jesus means when he says that he is the good shepherd. So I want you to grab your Bibles and read John chapter 10 verses 11 through 16. So now in these verses, Jesus makes it clear that he is the good shepherd and that he takes care of his sheep. And who are the sheep? We learned that last week. We are the sheep. So before we go any further, we're going to take a little bit closer look at what Jesus means when he calls us sheep. Because Jesus really isn't paying us any compliments here. First of all, if you've spent any time with sheep, you know that they're kind of dirty and they're smelly. Their wool is full of dirt and grass and burrs and even some bugs. And the other thing is, is they aren't capable of cleaning themselves. They are totally reliant on their shepherd to keep them clean. So you're probably thinking, well, wait a minute, I can clean myself. I don't need any help with that. But Jesus isn't referring to whether we can take a shower or a bath. He is concerned about our spiritual cleanliness, our sinful hearts. Now, are we able to wash away all that sin? No. We need some help there, don't we? We need Jesus. Jesus is there to cleanse away our sin. When he did, and he did that when he died on the cross for us. So, now, sheep are not all, only dirty. They aren't very good thinkers either. Now, I don't want you, any of you, to say that about yourself, that you're not a good thinker. Or to say it about anyone else for that matter. But it's true when we talk about sheep. Sheep don't think for themselves. They just follow their shepherd or another sheep that they think is in charge. In fact, they will follow another sheep right over the edge of the cliff without even thinking. So can you think of times when you might follow somebody without really thinking about it? You can pause the video and discuss that with others around you or maybe make write it down a few notes. So I have to admit, but I sometimes follow others without thinking about it. We often are eager to fit in, to be liked, or to look cool, or we don't want, so we will do or say things that other people do or say without thinking about whether it is the best thing or if it's the right thing to do. It's important for all of us to stop, think about what our actions are and what we are saying. Do they follow up with what Jesus wants us to do? Before, if we have a decision we need to make, we need to look at our Bible. We need to pray to God about it. See what God's word says. Make sure that our decisions, that our words, our actions, and our beliefs line up with what the Bible says is true. Another interesting fact about sheep is that they are directionally challenged. The poor things can't find their way on their own. That's why they have a shepherd. Now, if they do happen to wander off from the flock or away from the shepherd, it's hard, if not almost impossible, for them to get back on their own. The shepherd has to come and find them. 
So now Jesus shares a story about this in Luke 15, verses 4 through 7. So pause and read through this very familiar story. Now, you just finished reading the parable of the lost sheep. And this is what a good shepherd does. Jesus does this when we start to wander away from him. He comes looking for us and carries us back to the sheepfold and he celebrates it all the way back because we have a relationship with him again. But what do you think would happen if the shepherd didn't come and look for the lost sheep? Do you think the sheep would be okay? You know, if my dog Esther wandered off and got lost, she'd probably be okay. She's a big dog. She would bark and growl and protect herself. She has sharp teeth. She has big heavy paws that she could use to hit or scratch people with the claws. And she could run away. Now, she don't have any of those things. They don't have sharp teeth. They don't have claws. They can't run away. They're too slow. And they can't even growl. They need a shepherd to protect them. If the shepherd doesn't come back, the lost sheep will most likely become food for a wolf or another predator. So how are we like the sheep here? Well, when we stop spending time with Jesus, reading our Bibles, not praying, not going to church, not spending time with other believers, we have a harder time living the life that Jesus wants us to. It is more difficult to protect ourselves from the dangers and the temptations of our sinful world. If we want to be like Jesus, which is what life is all about, we need to keep our focus on Jesus. The fact, now the last fact I want to share about sheep is kind of funny if you picture it. If a sheep falls over on his back, he can't get up on his own. He will lay there flailing his legs until someone comes and helps him up. Well, sometimes life can get difficult for us as well. I realize you're kids, but life can still be tough, right? Maybe you're being bullied. Maybe you are very disappointed by something that didn't happen. Maybe you've had a big disagreement with a close friend or a family member. Or maybe you struggle with a subject in school and it doesn't seem like no matter how hard you try, you just don't feel successful. You feel like the sheep lying on his back, flailing his legs. Life is hard sometimes because we live in a world full of sin and bad choices and we can't save ourselves. We need Jesus. We need him to pick us up, put us back on our feet, lead us and encourage us. So now that we've looked at sheep, let's take a quick look at the shepherds. What kind of shepherd does Jesus say he is? That's right, he's a good shepherd. So if he's a good shepherd, that probably means there's bad shepherds, right? So who's a bad shepherd? Well, the bad shepherds can be any person who doesn't care about the sheep. They only care about what they get from the sheep. They want the sheep's wool, they want the meat, they want the milk, but they don't want to work to take care of them. So now in our scripture for today, John 10 verses 11 through 16, Jesus points out the difference between a good shepherd and a bad shepherd, and he does it twice. If you want, you can pause the video and look back and see if you can recall what that is. But Jesus says, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He says it in verse 11 and in verse 15. He says it twice because it's so important. 
Sheep are dirty. They make bad choices. They're directionless and they're defenseless. Hey, that sounds like me. Does it sound like you too? We are dirty from sin. We make bad choices instead of trusting and following Jesus. And we can easily get lost and follow the wrong person. And we aren't able to save ourselves. Without our good shepherd, we are unable to live the wonderful life that God has intended for us. The wolves, the temptation and the sin will threaten to steal us away from the life that Jesus wants for us. Because of his great love for all of us, Jesus died in our place so that we can have that wonderful life here on earth and in heaven. Jesus is our good shepherd and he chose to lay down his life for us. He came to lead us, to teach us, and to save us. So, I want us to look at the last verse of our lesson. That's verse 16. When Jesus tells us there that he came to save who? Did he came just for me? Did he just come for you? No, he came for who? Everyone in the whole world. Jesus is saying that anyone who believes in him and follows him can have this wonderful life you know, that he has promised us. It doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter what you look like. We are all in the same flock. We are all in the same family if we believe and follow Jesus, our good shepherd. All we have to do is follow Jesus. And he is there waiting to take us to heaven with him one day. So today we're going to finish a little different. I want you to grab your Bibles and we're going to pray the scripture today. I want you to find Psalm 23, which is a song that praises God for being our good shepherd. So will you read it with me? The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. And surely your goodness and your love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In Jesus' name, amen. So, I hope you have a wonderful week. Walk with the Lord and be a blessing to everyone.